So we're in a new space for 2022 and with a new space comes a new desk setup video. Today we'll take a look at all the gear I've been using for gaming, editing, and productivity. Some of the components have been covered in a few of my other videos, but this will sort of be my first full look at my current monitor, peripherals, and audio choices for the start of the year. So with that said, let's take a look at the newest addition to the setup, and that's the desk itself. The desktop is the classic kitchen countertop from Ikea with some white Alex drawers on each side. The specific top is called the Molecula and it's a little too shallow for my liking at 25 and 5 8 inches. It was originally 98 inches wide but I trimmed off 8 inches to fit snug against this wall. For some extra stability and versatility, I've added a generic white sit-stand desk frame from a local office furniture store. This particular model has 4 adjustable presets that give me easy access to go from sit to stand and changes my workflow during the day. At the lowest height, the Molecular Tabletop sits on top of the Alex drawers to eliminate any potential wobbling that's noticeable when set to the standing height. If you're interested in doing something similar, then I'd suggest going with a dual motor frame to make sure you have enough power to quietly raise and lower the desk. There's a ton of sit-stand desk options out there, but I'll leave a few links in the description for some highly reviewed frames. I'm most productive in the mornings and find myself standing at my desk until about noon. Usually after lunch, I'll lower the desk back down to a sitting position and use this IKEA longfall chair. It's relatively affordable when it comes to office chairs, and although it doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles, it's still very comfortable and does the job. Now let's talk about one of the parts of my desk that's always changing, and that's the audio setup. I normally bounce between gaming headsets for testing, but as my daily drivers, I've been using the Audio-Technica ATH AD 500Xs for about six months now. I know that they're quite an old set of cans, but a friend of mine recommended them to me as a budget option when I was looking for an open back set of headphones, and I've quickly fallen in love with them. The overall design of these headphones are very polarizing and honestly do look sort of silly on your head, but believe me when I say that they're extremely light and comfortable. And for a price point of under $100, the sound coming out of these is amazing for gaming, editing, and listening to music. Being an open back headphone, they have a pretty decent sound stage and a fairly clean mid-range. My only real complaint about these is the fixed cable is obnoxiously long. I've tried routing this behind and under my desk, but it gets pretty annoying when it falls down and I run over the cable with my chair. It's honestly probably only a matter of time until these stop working. I've also been experimenting with the Moondrop Arias and enjoy the lighter feel of IEMs while gaming. The mic I'm using is the Rode Pod mic mounted to the low profile Wave mic arm. It's been the perfect affordable mic for gaming, conference calls, and occasional podcasting. The pod mic is an XLR mic, so both the mic and headphones are plugged into the audio interface called the Audion Evo 4, and that's plugged into my PC through a USB-C cable. Speaking of my PC, I built this last year and it's still one of my favorite builds I've ever done. I made a full video on performance and specs of this PC, but for those of you who haven't seen it yet, this is the Lian Lee O11D Mini with a 3090-5950X and a 14-inch portable Wii Maxit monitor mounted behind the front tempered glass panel. I use Wallpaper Engine on Steam to switch between the different animated backgrounds depending on the mood for the day. Then I'll adjust the rest of the colors on my PC using a software that a lot of you recommended called Signal RGB. I highly recommend this software for anyone who has multiple bloatware RGB software on their computer and would like to consolidate them all into one. I'll be honest, I'm not huge on RGB and I tend to have all the lights on a single static color and Signal RGB gives me the ability to do that with just a few clicks. I'll leave links below for some more info on the build and how the monitor is mounted for anyone who wants to check them out. For the keyboard, I'm using a low profile wireless mechanical keyboard from Keychron. This particular model is called the K3 that I reviewed last year and have been using it ever since. It's a low profile 75% keyboard with white Keychron optical switches. I've really enjoyed using it from a productivity standpoint since I can swap between multiple devices with a couple of keystrokes. I've always leaned towards a full sized gaming keyboard in the past like the Razer Ornata and the Corsair K70 and there were times where I missed the numpad but there were more times where I appreciated the extra desk real estate space with such a small compact form factor. I've recently fallen pretty deep into the custom keyboard rabbit hole and ordered parts for a build that I'll be working on soon. I may be making a video on that whole process so stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. To round off the peripherals, the mouse of choice is the Logitech G Pro Super Light in Black that I picked up in December of last year. It's still fairly new to the setup and my first lightweight wireless gaming mouse and after a couple months of using it, I don't think I can go back to a wired option or anything that's really above 70 grams. 
It's already been reviewed a million times, but this mouse has been a game changer for me. The lightweight craze really took off in 2019, so I'm a little late to the party, but now I can understand the hype and can get on the bandwagon on why more manufacturers are pushing the marketing for their lightweight options. I was using a Zowie ZA13 for years, and I'd be interested to see their take on a lightweight wireless gaming mouse. The mouse pad is an extra large soft artisan zero, honestly pretty pricey for a mouse pad, but the quality, consistency, and feel are unmatched. Everything from the low profile, perfect stitching, light smooth gliding, and rubber base that sticks to the table like glue really give this mouse pad a premium feel that's deserving of a premium price tag. It has an ideal amount of stopping power and low enough friction for me and the games that I play. And this combo has really helped me get back into being somewhat competitive, which leads me to my monitor or monitors of choice. I was playing around with the orientation of my monitors while putting this desk together. And for now, I've settled on my secondary display sitting on my left side in portrait mode. I mostly use this as a dedicated monitor for browsing, scripting, or coding. My main display sort of changes depending on the time of day. When I'm being a sweaty FPS gamer and playing games like CSGO, Halo, or Valorant, I run the Zowie XL2546K. It's no stranger to the competitive gaming scene, a TN panel that's 1080p, 240Hz, and has BenQ's exceptional motion reduction technology called DIAC. You really can't get any sweatier than that. But for all other games or when I'm editing and being productive, I swap to the LG 34GK950F. Ultra wide QHD display, and color accurate IPS panel that gives me the extra screen real estate and accurate colors I need while editing, but still has a high refresh rate for the times when I'm not playing a super competitive FPS. I have hot swap plates mounted to the back of each monitor, so swapping them out only takes a few seconds. I got this idea from the super clean setup of Ali on Optimum Tech. Above my monitors is a huge standing calendar that has a modern minimalistic vibe with the simple white and black Helvetica font. The calendar is functional, but it's more of an art piece and fairly expensive for what it is. I've always wanted one, but couldn't justify the price tag, but moving into the space, I felt that I needed to put something above my monitors to fill the void, and on top of that, I found it on sale for about 75% off. On the right wall, I have a framed print of the Brain Anatomy from Orc Posters. They have a bunch of interesting, simplistic, typographic prints that are mainly designed in shapes of cities or countries. On the left, I have an IKEA Scottish pegboard with some hooks and shelves to carry and showcase some more of my productivity and essential items. Just behind all of that, I have a Nanlite Pavo tube that I normally use for lighting videos, but it doubles up as a really expensive desk or monitor backlight. So that pretty much sums up all of the tech on my desk setup for the beginning of the year. I anticipate a few changes as I'm always tinkering with new gear to try to find the most optimal setup that works best for me. I'll try to link everything in the description below, but feel free to drop any questions in the comments and I'll try my best to get to them. Otherwise, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one and later days.